good afternoon everyone welcome for this uh, channel uh, transconnect and uh, we'll be today covering the first uh, uh, hla topic and uh, not really hla it is a basic topic uh, wherein we need to have a dna extraction before uh, we start any downstream application now dna extraction uh, i mean theoretical we have all seen and done but i think it, the more important thing is if we go for the practical demonstration and this session is uh, going to cover the practical part of the dna extraction so me and my colleague i am dr mohit choudhary uh, senior consultant in, uh, in transplant immunology and transfusion medicine with i am uh, uh, with uh, miss ayushi yadav who is my colleague who will be taking uh, us through the actual process of dna extraction so before she starts i'm just going to give you a brief background about what dna extraction is and what dna is in fact dna is the building block and we all know it's a genetic material uh so when whenever we start a dna extraction process uh, we know that there is wide application for dna it is routinely used in the molecular laboratory uh, in various various downstream applications uh, uh, right from hla typing to dna finger typing and uh, using in mole other molecular tests like oncology markers and all those so uh, so if the process uh, frees the dna from the cell and separate it from uh, the cellular fluids and proteins and uh, then we use it for the downstream application for various genetic analysis the sample source can be various it can be various sources like human specimen like blood you can get it from hair saliva semen etc uh, even animal tissue can be used at places plant tissues exhumed tissue samples ancient or forensic samples and the other sample that we use in our uh, in a hospital based setting is ffps it's like uh, formalin fake uh, paraffin embedded blocks that can be used even placenta sometimes uh, can come as a sample source for dna extraction process and that helps in uh, some pre implantation genetic analysis and all those things where we require the uh, dna from such sources like amniotic fluid and placenta we can extract from them as well so basically any cell which has got some dna in it can be uh, if we can take it out extract the dna and then use it for downstream application so the basic process of uh, uh, dna uh, there are various methods of dna extraction and uh, uh, so we can divide it into two processes like chemical dna extraction method or uh, physical dna extraction method the chemical dna extraction method is uh, uh, can be further divided into organic or inorganic extraction methods all of them are not used nowadays but uh, we'll be running through one of the process that we employ in our laboratory for organic dna extraction method it's a phenol chloroform dna extraction method many research labs still perform this uh, method and it is the the method from which most of the other methods have evolved and all of us would remember that we have started with it the inorganic dna extraction method uh, it comprises of proteinase k dna extraction method where we use a proteinase k to remove the proteins and uh, the other method is the salting or dna extraction and then we have a combination of these two method uh, linked together in a method called silica gel based dna extraction method which we use in our lab now these are the chemical extraction method the other methods are physical dna extraction method and uh, you know uh, these physical dna extraction method uh, utilize still many labs utilize this magnetic bead dna extraction method where we 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 create a magnetic field and a magnetic bead is added to it and the DNA sticks to the uh, magnetic bead and that can be you know taken uh, and extracted through that. The other is the paper DNA extraction method which is not uh, used nowadays and it is a obsolete method nowadays. But yes, uh, I mean as a research or as a as a thing to know, you should know that technically these are the methods that are available for DNA extraction. now i uh, hand over the session to uh, 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 my colleague ms ayushi who is going to take us through the uh, through the uh, the video of the uh, the practical demonstration of dna extraction but before that i just want to reiterate the steps and there is first is the dna extraction but whenever you do a dna extraction you need to always quantify the dna you need to know what the concentration of dna is what the yield of the dna is once you have the dna you amplify the dna so i mean depending upon what kind of a downstream application you intend to do that uh, 
then you do the desired separation whether you want to run a gel or you want to separate it and see through the ladder so uh, depending upon what you are going to use as a downstream application like in our lab you would like to do an hla typing so for that you need a dna extraction uh, the quantity of the dna may should be around 50 nanograms and the concentration should be i mean adequate so that we can perform the test uh, in one of the techniques whether it is sequence specific uh, polymer or uh, sequence specific oligonucleotide probe so ssp or ssop and then after that you do tend to do the analysis part so uh, over to ayushi but uh, uh, i mean she is going to run through the the, the whole process and uh, before that, she's going to tell you exactly what the steps in DNA extraction are and then post that the actual video of how to do it and how to perform the DNA extraction. Hello everyone, this is Ayushi and I work in a transplant immunology lab. I'll be taking you further with the proceedings of a practical demonstration of what we do in a DNA extraction. So first let's go through the steps that are involved in the extraction process. First, we'll be doing a lysis because we have to uh, remove the cell, uh, the nuclear membrane of the cell to extract the DNA. So for that, we'll be using an extraction buffer that is provided in the kit and it helps in the to dissolve the cellular membrane and remove the other contaminants. Once that is done, we'll be performing a binding process wherein we'll bind our uh, solution to a silica column. Now, this is a very unique process because the negatively charged DNA binds to the silica column in the presence of a high salt concentration. Then we'll move towards washing. Washing is basically a step of purification where we'll be removing the contaminants from the DNA because we don't want any contaminants to happen with our downstream processing. And then last step is elution. Elution step is basically a step of using a solution with a low concentration of salt so that the DNA that is has binded to the silica column in the binding process in the presence of a high salt concentration gets eluted and we get our DNA. So to start with, I'll be showing you a practical demonstration how we do the uh, DNA. For this particular video, we'll be doing the extraction using a whole blood sample. So this is our lab. As soon as we receive the sample in the laboratory, we give do it in the data entry and we give allocate a specific lab ID to the each sample that we have received. Once, once the sample is given an ID, we move to a DNA extraction area. This is the setup. We have the Kaizen kit that we are using today. We have a vertex mixture. We centrifuge the samples to high speed and move towards the data. Now, to start with, this is a sample. We use the EDTA virus for sample and start the extraction. We remove the plasma. Now, you can see after removing the plasma, we have to take out the buffy coat. Now, the buffy coat is extracted and added to the first appendix. Now that we have added the buffy coat, we will add the proteinase K that is provided in the kit. The kit we are using is a KIM DNA mini kit. After adding the proteinase K, we add the genomic lysis buffer. Once the both of the reagents are added, we vortex the mixture for homogenization and the sample is incubated at 50 centigrade temperature for around 10 to 15 minutes. Now once the incubation is done, an absolute ethanol can be added. Alternatively, you can also add the isopropyl alcohol. It will pellet out your DNA and get and help it to attach to the silica column. Once added, please homogenize the mixture again using a vertex mixer. And then you have to transfer the whole mixture to the silica column. This particular tube is again centrifuged so that the whole uh, the DNA gets bind to the column and the waste gets eluted to the collection tube. Here you can see the whole waste has collected to the collection tube. Now the silica column is again transferred to the next collection tube to further proceed with the steps of washing. Now washing is done in two steps as the kit provided there are two uh, washing buffers, wash buffer 1 and 2. The first washing is done with wash buffer 1. 
here we will add a quantity of the wash buffer and we will centrifuge the tubes again so that all the contaminants get collected to the collection tube again now this is uh, followed with the steps of washing with the wash buffer too now you can also uh, do the subsequent washing if you feel the uh, dna still not washed completely or the illusion has not been clear yet once that has happened you pr proceed with the add adding of illusion buffer as per the, the quantity of the dna required for your test you can add the illusion buffer it is advised to wait for some time after you add illusion so that the illusion buffer can uh, bind with your dna and get it diluted out once done you get a clear pellet as your dna now this is the dna that has been extracted out and is a clear elute okay so now that we have extracted our dna i'll hand over it again to dr mohit thanks ayushi uh so again reiterating the steps in dna extraction through the silica column we can uh, remember it by this mnemonic lbwe lbw we all know so l is uh, lysis lysis we use an extraction buffer or a lysis buffer to remove the cellular membranes and its contaminated uh, contaminants so basically when the cellular lysis happens obviously the dna is going to come out then we need to bind so binding will happen when the negative charge dna binds to the silica column in the presence of high salt concentration uh, after that we need to remove the impurities and remove the contaminants so we use uh, we do a lot of washing once washing is done and we have a clear pellet like uh, i usually said so then we need to elute it so we need a solution containing low concentration salt uh, which is added for elution and once we have the elution uh, when it's it is eluted it is ready for for the quantification and concentration so uh, i i hope we all uh, have understood how the dna extraction and the process of dna extraction takes place uh, of course you are going to have some doubts on the same you can you can put your doubts in the comment section and uh, we'll be happy to answer them if there is any other clarification that you want or you want that any other uh, topic that we should take in the next session that also can be uh, put in the comment section we thank you all for listening to us so patiently and don't forget to subscribe and like the channel thank you so much